Hi everyone, Allie Jane's here. My Christmas tree is purple. Beat that. She can't cook, she can't clean, she enjoys the fun of things in life. I put up my Christmas tree this week. First, I had to go get one. When I lived in Chicago, I had a giant apartment of giantness where giant trees could live. But when I moved to LA, I had to downsize my tree. So the other day, I braved the closest Walmart, which is not very close. Apparently, LA is allergic to Walmart. But anyway, I braved the Walmart and the screaming children and the people who stop in the middle of aisles and just stand there because my brother had alerted me to the fact that Walmart carries tiny trees in fabulous colors. His is black with skulls on it. And I figure if I can't have a giant tree of Rockefeller proportions, then I might as well have a fun tree of pretty proportions. So my tree is purple and awesome. Yay tree! My mom pointed out, thanks mom, that purple is the color of royalty. And that's pretty nifty, so I looked up more about purple and discovered that it stands for creativity and intuition and mystery and moodiness. Wait, what? Anyway, the magic of the internet informed me that it was also Cleopatra's favorite color, and during the silver age of comic books, comic books with purple on the front color sold better. <laughs> there was a silver age of comic books? So comic books have ages like dinosaurs? I think the comic book people might take themselves a little too seriously. Yesterday, I had rehearsal for The Deep End, the film where I play a nasty 1950s nurse. We're completing the film this weekend, so we were rehearsing a couple of key scenes. There are now several other nurses involved, which I get to boss around, and some really intense scenes between my character and the main patient, Anna. It is going to be amazing. And the lovely lady playing Anna brought homemade peanut butter cups to rehearsal. Every rehearsal should have homemade peanut butter cups. Peanut butter and chocolate, along with raspberry and chocolate, are two of the best chocolate combinations ever. And these homemade ones were made with some really high class chocolate. Ali seal of approval. I've been slacking on my James Bond assassin fitness lately, so in an effort to fix that, I met with a fitness company today who is looking for people to take their fitness classes for 12 weeks in exchange for a testimonial. 12 weeks of free assassin style fitness? I will give you the best testimonial ever. I don't know if they'll take me yet because apparently I might not be unfit enough for their needs, but here's hoping. By March, I might be upgraded from just fast enough to trick the really dumb villains into an Emma Peel Avenger style assassin. Lately, I've been watching Mad Men. I'm way behind, so I'm only partway through season two, but I have to say, I pretty much want to punch Don Draper by the end of every single episode. Yes, he's handsome, he's brilliant, and John Hamm does a fantastic job with the role, but oh my goodness. He whines and complains and gets childishly pissy about all these problems that only exist because he created them through his secrecy, his cheating, his stubbornness, and his disrespect for women. And he never learns from his mistakes. Oh, I want to punch him. The women on that show, however, I adore. They are far from perfect, but each woman has her own positive and negative characteristics. And I haven't wanted to punch any of them yet. Joan, in particular, steals every scene she's in. I want to see a whole movie Movie just of Joan. And both Peggy and Betty really fascinate me. They're really well written with so many different facets. Genius writers on that show. In honor of both Christmas and Mad Men, I'm wearing my red and green vintage 1960s Peggy dress. Vintage clothing rocks. I'm working on something special for you guys in the coming weeks. Something full of holiday goodness. So you sit there and wait with bated breath. With bated breath. Question of the week, what's your favorite thing of the week? Mine is my pretty purple Christmas tree. Leave a comment or video response below. This week, I'll leave you with the very first thing I ever filmed, almost exactly one year ago. It's a commercial for the 2009 Doritos contest, Crash the Super Bowl. Directors from all over the country, maybe the world, can submit their videos to this contest, and if they win, their commercial gets played during the Super Bowl. Pretty nifty. Enjoy the clip. Later, lovelies. Great Uncle Herbert had but one final wish, to be buried with his precious stockpile of Doritos. Selfish old geezer. I can't believe he'd rather take his Doritos with him than leave them to us. I say we take the Doritos, then leave the old man in a ditch. Oh, you win great. <laughs> this whole funeral was just a test to see if any of you really deserve to inherit my Doritos. But you all fail. What do you think of that, you losers? <laughs> Man, I'm really gonna miss those Doritos. Come on.
in LA, you're a major metropolis. Yet, your parades are so lacking. Your pride parade in June? It was okay, but I've been to Chicago's and girl, you need to work on your fabulosity. How is it that Britain has so many brilliant actors? It's such a tiny country. 